questions a little bit later. Let's dig in to the games industry. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's about uh, time. Someone did. Yeah, what? let's get what deep in. Talking? Jeff, how do I get into the games industry? You don't. Okay. How do, I get, how do I get early copies of games? Start a YouTube oh, channel. You, you definitely, yeah. Start a YouTube <laughs> channel uh, and say nice things about games. Are you in to influencers? Am I? Yeah. Are reviewers going to become the people who review the game after it comes out? Hang on. Do you like that? <laughs> this huh? is heavy. Yeah. Um, Let's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a messy time. Why? It, uh, it has been. So the thing that happened this week... Uh, that is another sign of what has been happening for a good long time here, I think, is Bethesda came out and posted uh, on their blog, Gary Steinman, former member of the media, uh, came out and posted a a thing basically talking about like, oh, we value media reviews and all this other stuff, like not really justifying the crux of it, which is Bethesda is no longer going to send out early review copies of games. Or they're day gonna, before launch. Day before launch is when they're going to send that stuff out. Just like they did for Doom. Right, just like they did for Doom, and then they kind of cite that as like, this is great, right? Um, which, no, uh, the Doom scenario really felt more like, hey, our beta came out and got hammered for being bad, uh, yeah. so we're not going to send it out. Beta. They're multiplayer yeah. beta, and we are super skittish about this game and how it's going to review, so we are not going to send it out. Uh, so and you, then they caught a break because it turned out the single player in that game's incredible. Yeah. They were idiots for not <laughs> sending it out and getting more people talking about that game. Now you can get physical copies of it for 25 bucks. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so you guys have been doing this for a while. And, and traditionally it has been when a game doesn't come out early, some skepticism or, or some questions. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, not 100%. It yeah. But. It doesn't always mean it's not like the movie industry where you can, you know, infer a lot of things from this movie was not screened for, for critics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where that, that means something very specific. Uh, but in some cases it definitely is that. So what, what, how does this affect somebody who wants to review a game? Uh, it means that uh, you are left to your own devices. If you want to try to get a, a copy of the game as early as possible. And there are ways to do that. Uh, that are not against the law um, or you are waiting for Bethesda or 2K to send you a game the day before launch and start on it then, which means you're either, which, you know, it, it, it's ultimately, it leads to some, some potential bad outcomes there because you've got a scenario where either your review is very late and in this industry, there are a lot of people that want to know if they're going to buy a game, yes or no, right at launch. Mm -hmm. right. That tends to be, over over the decades, uh, the time when people most are coming to look for review coverage turns out to be day of release. Right. Or so day before. Sense. Or day before. You know, yeah. But but that, it's a two or three day window, mm -hmm. not a week, which is always when, when companies have like embargoes for their reviews that are a full week before release. I feel like that totally works against them. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's it's as much a projection of confidence as it is just sort of like, I, I yeah, I've never understood the week before. I, I'd rather obviously rather have that than the you know like day of launch, you know the the nine a.m. day of launch embargo. But well, yeah. it needs to be a balance, right? You need to have the copy. Of uh, yeah, the game, yeah. You know. Ultimately, I don't care about when they want a review to go up as long as it's not after the release of the game, which is just that's you can't do yeah, that. that. That's at that point, you know, you go buy the game and and do your thing. Yeah. Um. Where was I going with this? So, yes. So the win the window for when people look for rele for reviews, yeah, exactly. Is, yeah, it's it, a couple day window. It, it is that window. So and, by and doing this, they are they are eliminating reviewers, critics from that launch week loop, unless those critics go fucking crazy scramble, right. and scramble and try to review that game as quickly as possible, which doesn't lead to. You know, you want to be able to take your time with that stuff. Right. Uh, you want to be able to have, you know, time to, like, fashion a reasonable, reasoned review. Especially uh, if there's multiplayer or things right. that are... And then in situations where there's multiplayer, there will be cases where you want to wait until after launch anyway because you want to test it out against a full player base or something. Like, like that was my original plan for Titanfall, but then it turned out they had the servers up over the weekend last weekend, and I was able to actually play a significant number of hours of it there. Right. Um... So, like, the problem kind of got solved that way. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying, like, it's not a good idea to test a real-world right. scenario, yeah. but uh, it seems like it is a 
it is kind of a nice uh i, I don't want to say luxury because it kind of almost seems necessary if you're trying to get something uh that has uh, some thought but, into it. But you're not wrong because it, it is it is kind of a luxury these days because you know the the amount of time you have to get that review out there in a you know a competitive period uh, and actually put out a reasoned argument that didn't just result in you fucking mainlining a game for 17, 72 hours straight like that. It is a luxury to have that kind of time and a lot of times games come in hot. Yeah, like patches I, I, come in hot. I reviewed Ocarina of Time. It came in on a Friday and the review ran Monday. And you also like wrote like a fuck. As I recall, you wrote like regular like live right. updates yeah, to like yeah. a blog or something yep. for that thing. Yeah, it's a yeah. Blog. I, there were news posts. Oh, weird. On on Gamespot.com, there was like daily updates of it's what you like were doing vine. in that game. It was a video game website, it's like a transcribed right. vine. Um, and yeah, so I mean, there are definitely cases where like yeah, I have fucking not slept to get reviews done and stuff like that and sometimes the work turns out great and sometimes you're like man that's, that's let me I ask wish, i wish i would have had a little more time to write that or, let me ask you this all right. okay uh why should a game company send early copies to press uh a, a publisher well that so that then i think is the rub and I think that that's what's changed over the years is, you know, what back, did they get out of back it? when alex and i were running a reviews department <laughs> yeah. yes which is by the way like 10 years ago with Close copy to, editors with yes with, with copy Come editors. That, yeah there was a person were they riding they were, their dinosaurs to work pretty much yeah uh there were multiple people who read review yes copy editors who did not play a lot of video games uh-huh that but were boy just, they love but copy boy they love copy and editing <laughs> said copy <laughs> and they were very nice people yeah sharon and, gosselin yeah shout sharon out gosselin, great, <laughs> great. She she made me understand why one wouldn't say spastic in a review. Yes, uh, that that it's runs international on the world website. wide yeah. web. I was yes. like, what is it, what are you even talking about? She's like, well, I was like, what? Okay, yeah, okay, no, all right, yes, okay, that makes sense. Now that you said, okay, yes, all right, yes, yes, good to know. Um, yeah, you know, like keep in mind that that was before there was a youtube that was before there was a twitch that was before a lot of the live streaming stuff content creation tools have been democratized in a way exactly. that weren't available then a guy named justin was just thinking about filming his daily life exactly what's it like all what's the time like being the justin yeah if only there was a dot tv they could tell me no mm. dot tv was no, around <laughs> no but you know at that point you know we were running a reviews department for a website that was the single largest place for you to get information about video games in the world yes uh please say it correctly is your number one it is you, where gamers go to know yeah uh news reviews yes news and reviews that you can use no i don't know <laughs> no and hands-on previews yeah for number one place spot for news previews i can't yeah. i don't uh, forget what it is yeah it was something like you that. remember the phone number no, we still have that phone number. I'm one eight hundred. I need I need to get a hold of it. Nintendo. Yeah, four two 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 six zero two. Time trot for. for Punch scout. Punch out tips. That's <laughs> uh, so so, so, so we were running. Yeah, we were running the reviews department of the, like by any metric, the largest place in the world to get information about games. There were no, there was no website that was bigger, uh, at, for game specific information. There was certainly no print magazine with a larger circulation that was devoted to games the way we were. Yeah. Um, and there was no, like companies did not have official channels to distribute their own stuff. Yep. So if even things like company assets at the time yep. were hotly negotiated over. It was like, we want to be the first to run this trailer. We want to be the first to have hands on with your game. So, that, and we'll put it in the top slot if, we, if you give it to us and not IGN. What would you say this is like ni late 90s to like early 2000s? GameSpot launched in 96 and it did not launch as the biggest place in the world for video uh, games. And, you know, but, certainly. but by 06, it was. Yeah. It was. We, we, right. And also, like, you know, GameSpot was a place where video, uh, I feel like, gameplay video stuff and, you know, IGN at the time too, they kind of had their right. debut we like, were yes i mean we were encoding real video videos of uh, one per game for every game we reviewed or covered for video game spot we we were producing videos for controllers at the time yeah so like before that which were bad and by bad i mean badass <laughs> like you got them on dumb dvd uh or you know uh stuff that came packaging with a magazine maybe right like a like a pc gamer thing would have a trailer on it and like that's where i was getting my trailer sure games. yeah uh if not just looking at stills right. in, in a magazine uh 
so yeah, I, I, very different time. And uh, the, totally. I, I and like and so like we were one of the reach was yeah the reach was was off the charts compared to anything else out there. And and you know we had deals in place to put our content in even more mainstream places on top of that. Um. So you know yeah like that stuff was showing up in fucking Best Buys and Targets and all this other stuff. Like you know like that content was everywhere. So and and also some of it you know that's probably when a lot of the timing stuff uh, uh the press release cycle got hammered out of like oh we're gonna release this thing can you run it or like hey this is the embargo date for this press cycle mm-hmm. right uh let's run it and we're gonna time our campaign and all this other stuff so like fast forward 10 years right right so 2006 to 2016 who ca- like do you need do you game, need the press? Do you need GameSpot to run your preview? Everyone has their own YouTube so channel the, the now. So the thing that started happening five years ago, or, or maybe a little more now, is EA was the first one that I saw doing it, creating their own YouTube channel, and they were literally interviewing themselves. Yeah. Yep. It was EA employees interviewing EA producers about upcoming EA games. And you'd look at it and go like, this isn't good. Like, the content is not very good. The interviewer is not terrific. The, it's not well shot. It's just kind of a mess. It's not well edited. But you looked at it and if, you know, I looked at it and went like, this is it. It's it's finally going to happen. This is not it, but they will figure this out. Yeah. yeah. And they will eventually cut the press out of large parts of the preview loop, which I, at the time, we were already deep into Giant Bomb. Yeah. We, and I was fucking stoked because th- <laughs> that was a part of the preview yeah. cycle that we didn't necessarily want to play in and didn't have the size and scale to play in either. We had still, I think we had still, we were still going to some preview events. Definitely. M- much more selective. And I wish we went to more, honestly. And, I uh, wish we had time to go to more of that stuff than we do now. Yeah. But even at the time, I think we were scaling down what interviews are we going to do. Oh, right? definitely. Like, we're yeah. not going to do these. And I would say even before <laughs> that stuff, there was the proto – the thing that tipped me off on that same thought train that got me on board was the beginning of Dev Diaries. When the, we started publishing at GameSpot, like, oh, it's a developer diary we're going to put up. This in-house made media of like, oh, they're just going to go around and talk to the guy, the programmer, the artist, whatever. Right. Yeah. And they're just doing that stuff. And it would come out like, here's one a week. Here's Dev Diary. Would three. GameSpot shoot those, or would no, those, no, no, so those, those were, were ones they were, were producing? Yeah. and we were just running it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and we were yeah. just running them, and yeah. then it was just like, oh, it, this is like, kind of just like an ad. Like you're just running these. I, w- w- there's information in here. Like people want to see the art. And of, I, uh, I want to say we had people in place that would sometimes be like, this Dev Diary is too much of an ad. You need to. Yes. You need to. It needs to have some real content in it too. And, and there's definitely a hard line of. Uh, because I I had this discussion with people at GameSpot was when do what is the line between a trailer and an and like an asset we're getting right yeah. like what is an ad and what's a trailer because hey we're running this uh, I don't know uh, Dragon Age Origins uh, that's too late but yeah. whatever uh, trailer right. And before that is a Dragon Age Origin ad that has most of that. Trailer <laughs> that's, in it. yeah. It's cut down to thirty yeah. seconds, right? Yeah. And like. I think one of the things that we made sure of, and it's just, it was a weird time, but it was like it won't, it cannot say like the coming soon or the date, the release date, and the the slate at the end with all the platforms, or whatever. If that's at the end, then it's an ad, oh, and, okay. and if, and if it's, that's not at the end, then it's just a trailer. Weird. Okay. Yeah. And like like pre order now. Oh like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do remember the time when that stuff was in there and going like, all right, no, cut, nope. that, cut yeah, that, cut that out. out, cut that out. Uh, but you look at all this stuff. You, this so, is all this is all preview cycle stuff. This is all like early early release, like you know the shit that uh, we had a previews department for. Yep, stuff that uh, you know was at least when we were at Gamespot, and I you know I was obviously doing less of it at Giant Bomb. It just sort of naturally became that way. But it was the stuff that was totally segregated from reviews, which was its own separate thing. Yeah, and that's that's you know you, I think you know we can talk about like the it was a relatively symbiotic relationship when it comes to official assets yeah. like that, where it was. Well, the website is getting a lot of eyeballs and traffic because yeah. it's the exclusive location for the first footage of this game. Watermark. Also, yeah, watermark that trailer. <laughs> and then also the publisher is getting a lot of eyeballs on that game right. because they're the top slot on the world's largest video game website yep. for that day. They're getting share of voice. <laughs> no, that share of voice would not become a term I had heard for <laughs> at least eight or nine years after that. And now I hear it all the time. <laughs> oh, God. And I want to die. Um, but yes, it was. So, but then there was yeah. also the symbiotic relationship. And the audience was was being exposed to this stuff, right? It was a it was a consolidated place to see. Hey, you know GameSpot's going to have the latest footage totally. of yeah. this thing. And then on top of that, there was the reviews versus previews dynamic where those were separate teams. You know, Brad was on the previews team. Right. 
Uh, me and Alex and, and Ryan were the reviews team Don't talk there for a while. Uh, do not talk do not to, do not make eye contact. Do not make eye contact. Do not go out into the field and look at these people. Yeah. So at the time was a was a system that on paper makes perfect sense. Exactly. And so you, you do you do not talk to PR people. Yeah. You're on the reviews team. You get the copy of the game when uh-huh. it's time to review it. And then we review it. Half the time the previews editor was even getting the review copies for us, which was maybe not the best way to go about doing things for a number of reasons I will not get into here. Um but it but, was set up to not have prior exactly. influence, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and so in some ways, that was the previews reviews relationship where they would set it up. We would knock it down. Yeah. They were relationship management. They were like, hey, uh, you know, yeah, of course we want to cover your game. Hey, yeah. we want to do this. And then we were like, this game is shit. Yeah. Uh, or it, this game is great. Yeah. You know, we don't know how it's going to go. Right. Um, and so, you know, after a negative review, you know, there, there would be some angry people. And sometimes the previous people would have to be the ones to deal with the person yelling at them. Cause at some point they stopped calling me, uh, cause I didn't ever say what they wanted to hear. Right. Uh, on, on those types of conversations. But then so. you're not booking the next event. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I don't have to go deal with like, oh, now we want to actually cover right. your next game. Right. And that's why a company like Rockstar gave one round one game's exclusives all the game spot and then the review would hit and they would get pissed for some small dumb reason and then they would give everything to ign for nine months and then ign would do something and say that the game was not the game of the generation or whatever (laughs) rockstar felt it needed to be said they weren't respecting the Mm -hmm. accomplishment and then it would swing back the other way. You know, and you so, get the guns of, you know. Yeah, ex- then yes, then you get the tires of San Andreas <laughs> yeah. or, you know, or whatever. <laughs> that, and, the fast food. Uh, right. <laughs> right. And, you know, all that stuff is, it, it is what it was, yeah. you know, and, and and it's not like that anymore. But a large part of that is because around the time that the press started realizing that this stuff was just fucking dumb. Uh uh, was also the time that the publishers started taking all that stuff into their own hands and creating their own distribution channels for that type well, of content. And, and in addition to their own channels, you know, as we've remarked here many, many times over, uh, as the democratization of of media and platforms has has taken hold, uh, there is no shortage of people you can find out there mm-hmm. who will ultimately say the things you want about the product you were putting out. Definitely. Well, uh, and, and it's not coincidence that this all timed out. Like the technology to make videos right. and get your mm-hmm. voice out there timed with like, hey, yeah. we got all these other people. And a lot of this led to a lot of conflicts at some of the larger publishers. You would hear kind of back channel stuff about PR teams and marketing teams clashing because the PR team was the one who dealt with the press. And they were like, this is our domain. Pub- promoting the game is our domain. And then you had the marketing people going like, I can just buy campaign. I can... I can pay money yeah. and send a copy of a, this game to this kid with a list of things that this kid is not allowed to say. And they'll do it. And unless the kid is super unprofessional, which does happen, which makes it a little volatile, they will get the exact message they want read by someone who is not an employee of their company. Right. And in some cases has a following of their own uh, that just takes what they say at face value. And so you see how this goes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And like, you know, I think – not the this isn't really a devil's advocate thing, but like I think I don't think there's always malicious intent there on the person who's making that content. I don't think they're tr- always trying to pull no, one over. No, it's just like no, I'm a huge it, fan of this game. Exactly. They, I, I just in some, I love in this. some cases they don't know or they yeah. or they're like whatever. Like I, they're like they're stoked. They're yeah, like, they're stoked. This company sent me a copy of a game. I right. Got, I got a free video game in the mail. You guys, but this, <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Well, so right. this is the, this is the fucked up thing is that I think in in the majority of cases if you asked. A lot of these these YouTubers, these influencers, and you said, you know, do you think you do what media does? You know, do you have that separation? Is that what you're going for? They'll just say no. That's right. not what I'm here for. I'm here to play games and and you know have an audience and entertain people, and that's what they're going for. The problem is that like I still feel like even with that kind of mostly unspoken but sort of understood thing, most people just still don't see that difference. Like they don't understand the notion right. that like. The person who is doing this paid marketing campaign on their YouTube channel for this game is not going to treat this product the same way that someone who is, uh, you know, professionally dispassionate in the way that press kind of has to be right. is going to approach it. Yeah. And does the audience mind? And, and I think the resounding answer to that is absolutely no, not. Absolutely not. I don't think they I don't think they care. I, I think a lot of them don't know. And I think the ones that do don't care. Yeah. I think I, they're still I mean, you know, obviously we're still a business, right? And right. I'm not going to, you know, not yeah. wood. 
I don't um, know how things are in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this closet you've got is very nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, you know, so I mean, I think there is still an audience of people out there that want that, that want the the press being the press, the the media, the, that kind, that that dispassionate take. Yes, passionate about the medium while being trying to be as professionally detached, as possible, right? uh, and and trying to. Objectivity is a weird thing. It's a, it's an incredibly hard thing, and it was it felt like one of the most forced things at Gamespot. Right, it was just like try and detach Jeff from this review. We were and, young and speak. What well, I'm saying, like, it's a reason why I think all of it has moved away from that. Yeah, it, and, it, and I think all of it has moved away because games are so much bigger now. Not not individual games, though those are certainly bigger. But just like the industry is such that like the types of people playing games have ch- has changed. And you know, you, you said in in the 90s. You were pretty self assured that like the the people reading the content about the games are probably going to be around the same age, mm-hmm. probably going to be around the same background, uh, yeah, and and all that sort of stuff. And you know, so and and people kind of played a little bit of everything. It wasn't until kind of halfway through the sixteen bit era and into the PlayStation that like sports games really broke out, and then Japanese RPGs really broke out onto their own and, and went down. Every, everything started going down its own weird rabbit hole. Right. So you had specific editors. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sports you had editors people like, who like, covered turn based strategy games versus real time exactly. strategy yeah. games. No. And, and you know, and then the audience fractured. Right. And then uh, it all became. And then you know, and then and, MOBAs and, happened and, and, and then, fucked everything and, up. Well, MMOs came on, well, came along and became the hugest thing in the world. You know, it wasn't EverQuest that did it. It was World of Warcraft. And then you had people launching dedicated World of Warcraft sites. Mm-hmm. How are you, as a general interest video game site, going to compete with the knowledge that comes out of a team of people that is focused on one specific game? You are not. Right. And you can't afford to staff up every time a new game comes out to then have that person there in perpetuity. So you can assign them to cover beats and do what you can if, if that's the way you want to go. But ultimately, I think the big website... Yeah, the monolith. The, the like, monolith the had to start seeding ground yeah. to like fan Wikia, sites that were right. that were covering, right. you know, like individual franchises or properties or whatever. Of course, they're going to know more about the WoW patch than, you know, the the website that has to try to cover every single game. And then you know, podcasts happened. Yeah, and then YouTube channels happened, mm-hmm. and those places Twitch. found and personality happened. Yeah, personality happened, you know? and now developers can seed those places without having developers to. can be personalities on their own that's true and get their own twitter following and run their own streams and interview each other about their own games if they want as well you know it's not just you know this scenario we're talking about of like you know like everyone likes to talk about the, the kid in their bedroom you know but like some of those are actually very sophisticated business operations around yes. that stuff and taking like they've they've got a rate card <laughs> you know you want oh you want to play a uh, kingdoms of Amalur reckoning okay all right it's going to be this much do you think how do you think this affects the consumer? If if uh, sites, I mean, and there's a handful of them. They aren't that so this, many anymore. This Bethesda move is specifically built, in my eyes, to result in less informed consumers. Which I was talking to you earlier, which feels like in an age where publishers are asking more than ever for consumers to make uninformed choices totally. on uh, uh pre-orders season passes pre-orders now that being Buy said now to get access to the demo yeah like, you know exactly. hey, if you pay, play for pay for the expensive version you can start playing on friday instead of tuesday right and or the promise of things right yeah. like hey here's the release of the game we're gonna patch it it's gonna get better mm-hmm. Just bear with us servers are gonna work eventually and also you should buy this season pass there's gonna be a lot of great content coming up that we are not gonna necessarily right. show you uh but that being said there is a longer than ever also preview cycle on these games which you know you do get uh, from the very first screenshot which might so. be five years like, I, I agree but i i feel like that that cycle is even more controlled than it ever was 10, it's delivering very ago, differently and it's delivered very differently. And, and also has run into a lot more problems since people expect more media now where mm-hmm. it's just like oh these early videos don't match up with what the final oh, product sure is. yeah yeah we're starting to see that and i think that's yeah it's a valid complaint at the same time like knowing a thing or two about what happens to a game during its development. But that's a, that's a perspective of somebody who's exactly. been in it. Totally. I mean, yeah. it, that's and, one of the reasons I always heard, like, why isn't E3 just open to the public? And it's like, well, those behind closed door, door things, you don't necessarily want the public seeing this game because they might not understand what an early build might be like. Or it's like, like sometimes it's completely broken right. and you're they're talking you through it. Or, or they're like, hey, if you turn left, it's going to crash. Right. Or like, so hey, I'm sorry, sure. let me reset the build. Or you're not even playing. You're watching someone do a scripted demo, and they've right. practiced that demo a hundred times. That's that's been happening for years too. I, we've had people come into our office and run scripted demos. Yeah, 
uh, where I've asked questions in the middle of the demo and they are like, uh, 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 mm. okay, hang on. Now I'm going to go over here uh, as you can see. But yeah, so like that's the eighties stuff- are captured. Very uh, well. I think the preview cycle is, you know, fairly long, and the the ask up front as uh, we talked about this recently and bringing it up for like the fourth time here, as maybe prices are still the same on games. The all in price on games has sec- not secretly, oh, oh. hello, uh, not so secretly gone up. Right, like yes. where it's sixty dollars to get in the door, and then you're paying one hundred and twenty yeah. over the lifetime. Uh, that's a lot to ask, yeah. and uh, to ask someone to restrict the information they have from re- a review source i think is kind of i i think cowardly I, uh, yeah, yeah like n- like yes uh it is stand it is behind a, your product it is a of. definite lack of confidence and I, that's that's what i look at the doom situation as you can say what you will about you know what they're doing now on a go forward basis because honestly like i don't think a remaster of skyrim like who cares Somebody like it's, cares. It's, it's still well. There's a kid on yeah, YouTube Bethesda who cares. got it a month ago that really cares yeah. about it. I'm, I'm going to play this clip this, from this clip. I sent this clip to you. It, yeah. it appears in Kotaku's article about all this. Yeah, this this kid uh, is very this... very excited about Skyrim. Hey guys, this is Matt from GiantBomb.com, uh-huh. and I'm here to show you every single location of the Danger quest lines in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This video has done really well. He's super <laughs> yeah, excited he's about super Skyrim. Excited about it. Listen to him. I think he's going to go post it. Um, I have some inside information about this kid. There's a conflict of interest here. What? We have to destroy him. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Let's listen. Trying see. for years. Let's no, see what this, this other upstart's the, the actual. This is the actual one. Hey, it's me, GV, and wow, am I excited to bring you guys this. So Bethesda got in contact with me, yes, the Bethesda, and said that since I had been such a great supporter of all of their series, they decided to send me Skyrim the special edition early, about a month early, honestly. They sent me the game, they like overnighted it. I got the Xbox One edition um, very early in the morning, like at 10 a.m. Oh, and uh, this is I was able to do some videos for it. Um, there was an embargo date, meaning I wasn't able to upload or talk about that until the 21st, which is when this first video should be going up. Obviously, I have produced these videos beforehand. So basically, what I'm going to be doing with this series is starting a whole new Skyrim file. And- all right. Now you get the gist of that. I, I mean, it's all right there. What day did that go up? 21st. 21st. October. He says it right there. Last time I checked. Not the day before release. Nope. <laughs> like, part of Bethesda's statement is that they feel that people should all be having the same experience at the same time. Which was... A, a, which is, like, like, silly. Let's garbage. Silly. Like, let's just call like, it what it is. That's trash. That's, that's not I mean, what true. they should have just said is, like, we don't need you. Totally. If well, they, no, they yeah, can't say that, though. They, they should. But they, they should. They don't. They can't. Ugh. But if they did, though... But if, I, if I mean, that's, to say I would have way more respect but they, for. They hey, you know, we just don't think the press is the, valuable for the exact same reason that you said that there is still an audience for people who do sure. that. You know, the traditional press work. You know, like they can't just come out and say, "Yeah, we don't think that matters." But I think coming out and saying what they're saying and then having the press then translated into what is actually being said there has the same effect on that audience that you're talking about. And, and like also, I, after it, we kind of talked about some of the stuff on Twitter, I definitely saw people going like, "Well." Uh, I actually had a couple people say, hey, well, I was going to go get this Skyrim thing, but instead I bought a Giant Bomb premium subscription, to which I'm like, I, that's okay, cool. I mean, I, I'm not going to argue with that one bit, but this is not a remaster over here. Yeah, so look. Actually, maybe kind of. I, I, I want to pause for a second and just say, like, this. Ha- I, if anybody's listening to this, I don't think this has – I've saw some of this argument come up. This is not, like, an entitlement thing to get games early. Like, I do, I do not think this is – anything to do with that yeah uh like if you're reading it as that i hope that's not what this is coming cro- across well, no, no 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 no. Th- th- this is not ab- <sighs> this is just about being able to do the job as a video game critic in an effective way as jeff said you know like the the time when people are looking for reviews of games is right around the time of launch and if people aren't going to get access to those games, then those reviews can't run around the time when people are looking at that information. Which now, is going to leave a clear window for videos like this to exist. Yeah. And, and, and that's fine. Like, like, again, like Bethesda has no like obligation, right. legal or otherwise, right. to send out review copies. Like, and this isn't fact, about that. This makes arguably the most sense for them yeah. in the context of what they want to do, which is sell as many of their video games as they humanly possibly can because companies don't if, care if about review been, scores. If there had been zero Fallout 4, that's not true. No, no, no. If, when, it, when the pre-order numbers are bad, they care about review scores. If the pre-order numbers are good... Some publishers care about their Metacritic more than others. 
for sure. I, I feel like more and more I am hearing from from people you're, you're anecdotally right. is that yes. that is becoming far less important. I, I agree with you. I think I think it is uh, it is less, but there are still some companies that are hooked up to that teat for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, no, this, this is, this makes sense for them, for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. For them. like, like think about it. Like would they have sold more copies of fallout four? If there were zero reviews on launch day? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I, Absolutely. I, yeah. If there was, if there was little, if there was less talk about how, borderline broken some of the console versions of that game were yeah i mean that game had enough uh, momentum to push it over right. the over the counter but this was but this but but having that thing kind of right there yeah. at the finish line of someone going like actually hey this game needs like extensive patchwork because right. it's a bethesda game you should know that by now but also right. this one's still that way well what do you think here's a here's a different i mean us, uh, another like impossible hypothetical what would have happened to no man's sky if reviews came out two weeks early right like, is that a game that would have been, like, people would have seen, people would have been like, oh, it's not quite there yet. Well, I mean, considering that the patch that came for yeah, that game. Yeah, but, you know, I'm saying, like, if it, had, if it had been in its launch day state two weeks early. Sure. You're, you're right. I mean, day one patches get things weird, but they, they get things weird all along. And, like, we definitely get copies of games that will, some like, you know, hey, here's a copy of the game that runs on a debug machine, and it has our day one patch rolled into it. The day one patch just hasn't hit the retail servers yet because yeah. it's going through cert. Right, uh, and that happens. Um, and then you, you still have to wait anyway for launch to see how the servers work and all that other stuff on, on some games. Yeah, on yeah. some games you will you will need that as well. And so more and like, more games that have every hooks. game is going to be its own yeah. unique case around like when is maybe the right time to review it versus like oh well you know hey if we're reviewing it three weeks early then they've still got a patch and it, that's fine because ostensibly none of the people reading this review are going to ever play it without that patch. Because yeah. they're reading it on the internet, so you can safely assume they've got internet to download that patch. So, so you, let's, I, I, let's let's just clarify exactly what this is, because I feel like we've muddied this by going in a lot of different directions, talking about a lot of different factors in it's all a, of it's this. It's such a large issue. It you is. Know? And it's it's fascinating. Well, when well you, when it you look, triggers off a lot of yeah. other But when you look at the case of, like, you know, 2K, which is also adhering to a policy like this, not as publicly, but, I mean, it's it's basically been gotten out yeah. there that this is what they're doing now. Uh -huh. In the case of, like, Civ and in case of Mafia 3, none of those games had, like, patches that were holding up that game. Right. Like, yeah. Civ is not a game I feel like they have a lack of confidence in. And that also did not go out to reviewers until day before. This is just right. a matter of policy. And again, I think that the ultimate message we're getting here is that to these publishers, having review scores out there for their games is less important to them than making sure that the like the consumer is not in any way blockaded or convinced that they shouldn't like continue on with the pre-order they have already right. put in there totally and, and i would say to be fair for civ you i think at least they get a unfinished a preview build that we were allowed to put footage up of and that's in some ways worse could be but at because least then it goes back to you know oh well they're more than happy to roll out the red carpet when it's preview time when they can say things like oh this will be fixed right but this oh, was, this will be in fixed. the case of save it was fairly it was like three weeks it was before fairly the game yeah, came out. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I just want like you were able to get a sense of what was going on there because some companies won't even let you get you know footage like right. they'll they'll right. say like hey you can play this but just don't talk about it and like that's tough too like mm -hmm. when it's like you have to yeah and you know like bethesda is out there this week with harvey smith taking him around in San Francisco and doing interviews for Dishonored 2. And some outlets are still doing those interviews. We ended up passing on it because I was coming out here. Uh, and it was just like, oh, well, we're just not going to have time to do that at the office with some of the other stuff we have scheduled for this day. Thank you for the offer. And then three hours later, this hit. And so, I probably would have gone back and said, we are unbooking this appointment. Thank you very much. So do you think it's a, a case where... Uh, well, Alex, did you want to? Did you kind of nail what you wanted to nail? I mean, I think point? for the most part, I mean, I, the the thing I want to emphasize, and you were talking about sort of like the entitlement stuff and whatever. It's like again, I, I think everyone at this table sort of agrees that if we were in the positions of these companies and we had access to the various ways we could promote our game outside of the you know the generally uncontrollable main like regular games press, then we would make the same decision because in the end. You don't know what a reviewer is going to say about your game. It's a wild card. Like so, I think if, if you have really positive reviews, that will certainly help your yeah. case. 
Uh, like you're never going to argue with positive reviews, but yeah. you know, especially early positive. But you can't yeah. you can't guarantee that those will happen. Even nope. if you think you have the best game in the world, you can't guarantee that critics are going to respond to not. it. Yeah, definitely not. And so they're looking at that risk and mitigating it the way uh, the way that they see fit. And, right? and, and I think the that's current, fine. Yeah, like and the current climate for how games information is disseminated and how you know what personalities and and methods people are looking to get their games coverage. It has allowed them to do that now. Like I, I can't imagine this is a new idea that everyone is suddenly coming upon. I have to imagine there have been publishers that have been wanting to do something yeah. like this for a oh, long yeah. time and, and they kind of have in drips and drabs yeah i, I, I and think sometimes from game to game yeah you know? I, I, like there's definitely like hey we're having an event and we're inviting these outlets because we're pretty sure that they're you know, like into the thing that we're putting out in front of them or like there's definitely like cases where they're trying to manage that as best they can what if they did a thing where you have to in their nda you say you get a preview copy okay and in the nda it says hey we can watch Watch you play, you know, through your console or PC, because most of those things will have this functionality, right? Of like being able to stream out or do whatever. Sure. Uh, and uh, we, while you're playing, we we reserve to write the right to tune in and watch you play this preview thing. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's no. what I'm saying. That's so the next, step. Uh, no, that that so Ubisoft wanted to send people over to watch people play the first few hours of Assassin's Creed games early on to watch them play. It. Yeah, to watch the the review to make sure they were yeah. getting. Yeah. It. yeah. Right, exactly. And we've had all sorts of weird cases where, like, you know, like we've had like people come uh, when Resistance came out. They wanted to do a sit down demo with someone uh, around review time. Oh, like like a hand holding, like, like hey, we're, we just want to walk you through some of this stuff. And it wasn't ever presented to me as like we want to sit down with the reviewer. Mm. And I was like, well, I'm the reviews editor, so sit down with me. I'm not reviewing the game, but yeah, sit down with me and and. Let's look at it. Yeah, sure. And they walked me through weapons. I was like, okay, thanks for coming by. Good to, good to see you guys. Like, you know, hey, you're, you, you guys are all right by me. Cool, right. whatever. And then they left. And I didn't review that game. I was never intending to review that game. But it never came up. Oh, as, in, like, a, as like a... We weren't able to prime the reviewer on some of this it, stuff. It came up after the fact where they were like, we felt deceived. Oh, really? And it was like, um... We never said you were going to meet with the reviewer. You never specifically asked to meet with the reviewer. Yeah. What are you talking about? Um, that's that's kind of lame. There's a lot of really crazy shit that has happened over the years around that stuff. But yeah, the the like UB wanting to come watch because they had events and it's a single player game. And for single player games, there is zero reason to have an event for your game. Right. So like they had an event for Bioshock that I didn't go to. That actually resulted in I've told the story before, but like they had an event for Bioshock. When you say and, event, you mean like a review? Yeah, event? they had people go off site to play through Bioshock. Right. You're not going to get a, a copy. You'll go be right. sequestered exactly. to go play. And they were playing it on debug 360s with the games installed to the hard drive. Ah. Uh, we said no, absolutely not. And they sent me a retail copy of the game. And ah. I, I reviewed it off of disc. Uh, later than that event, because they didn't have retail at that point, but they they sent it, and we had a review up at the same time, and all other stuff. It was. One of the perks of being such a large outlet is that you could put your foot down in that stuff and they would go, oh, right. <laughs> um, different time. Different time. Uh, Definitely a different time. But so then in that case, playing that game off disc resulted in late game slowdowns and hitching and stuff like that that no reviewer saw because they were playing it off a hard drive. This was before you could just install right, right. any game or to a 360 hard drive. Installs. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Jeez, remember that i forgot about the optional right like push y get in yeah. so i came out of that going like oh well thankfully we got it right you know i feel good about this whole process because uh we you know we made sure that we saw what the consumer was going to see and hooray and instead i got a shit ton of emails from people going none of the other reviews said that yeah you must be fucking crazy and i'm uh, like all right well <laughs> fuck you <laughs> basically <laughs> Uh, fuck me, I guess, for thinking that the audience would know or care. So, yeah, I've I've got a pretty long history of like audience not necessarily caring about the yeah. like, hey, we're over here feeling like we're going the extra mile to do due diligence and all this other stuff and getting shit on from all ends. Uh, so yeah, this, this is nothing. That part of it is certainly nothing new. Either. Is this a trend going forward? Is this, is, are we going to see more publishers adhere to similar, if not the same kind of standards? Do you think that most outlets out there reviewing games that are on Metacritic are relevant outlets with things to say about games? Most. Okay. 
Oh, I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, yeah. Uh, like, do you think that game reviews matter anymore? It, it to paint, the audience that reads uh, that reads editorial coverage online, do you think that a that, traditional game? That, you know, yeah, a traditional. Do you think that that now smaller audience needs game reviews the same way they used to? The the, the reviewer, the critic inside of me, is dying inside saying this, but no. And yeah. and it's here's the thing. And, and granted, this is personal, anecdotal, but like I feel like even when anytime I, we're in a position where we don't necessarily adhere as hard to the launch day review cycle as as other outlets yeah. like we're lucky in that regard because the way we cover games is just you know kind of different right uh, uh, yeah it, 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 that's probably worth saying is like a lot of this stuff doesn't necessarily affect us not in the hugest way in the no. hugest way because like when we go to do a quick look of a game odds are sometimes we've bought we purchased that game anyway yeah you know? Uh, but you know, the thing I, I hear over and over again is even from people who do enjoy reading reviews on our website is that more often than not, all they really need to do is watch the quick look to get an idea of whether that's right. a game they want to buy or not. And I think that's something that speaks to the way big games have changed. Uh, and you know, with kind of safer AAA games in, in a sense where you, you know what that thing is, mm -hmm. you might not know what that thing is, but you know what that thing is. Um, you know, more or less if you, you probably already know if you care about Dishonored 2. Yeah. You know, I, and the only thing that would dissuade you is information that would tell you that Dishonored 2 is not as good as you are hoping it would be, exactly. whether it's for technical or for design reasons or whatever, you know, it, it you're, it's all it, it you need that poison pill to like to convince you otherwise. And I think and if it, that it, doesn't sometimes make, it works the other way too. Yes. Like I, I definitely like on the heels of that Titanfall review running. I certainly saw some people going like, well, I was on the fence, but I think I'm going to definitely pick it up after right. reading your review. So, I mean, you know, reviews have influence one way or the yes. other. But also, I think you've got people that know one way or the other if they're into a genre or not now. Like, you know, game game players have kind of distilled down into those buckets a little more easily that they kind of just know themselves a little better than they used to. Yeah. And in a case like ours, where, you know, we are not reaching out and trying to hit the most mainstream of audiences the way ten, we maybe were 10 years ago. Right. So at this point, I think the type of person that would listen to the three of us talk about this topic for as long as we have, uh -huh. they don't need game reviews at all. They might like to read them. Sometimes I like to read reviews of albums. Yeah. But think about how useless music reviews are now. They were already pretty useless when the cost of music was free if you were willing to break the law. Uh -huh. And now it is more or less free with a subscription service to a streaming service. Like the cost to entry. It's the same reason you don't review free-to-play games most of the time. Right. It's the or same reason you games. don't review mobile games. Yeah. Like everyone, some business guy would come in every 18 months for the last 10 years and go like, how come you guys don't review mobile games? That's where all the money is. What the fuck is wrong with you assholes? And you would have to in instruct them. Or sometimes they wouldn't take no for an answer and you'd have to go down the rabbit hole for a while and then they wouldn't traffic and you'd go back to them and go, see? Yeah. It's because I, no one wants to read that stuff. No one wants to, you know, like like the mainstream audience, I don't think needs music reviews. They'll go listen to the music and make it up, make up their own mind. Oh, yeah, I think you yeah, can do I'll, that by watching a quick look in a lot of cases. Yeah, because it's, it's not one to one because in, it's, in, not, in, right, in, it's in, not. Because, you know, the more one to one to be like, you know, when demos existed right. in, in great quantity. But and there's that a lot was more of technical tests like like demos are coming back in weird ways, but they're coming back as pre-order bonuses, Free to which try. is way worse. But but I, yeah, sure. but but I think the music thing, technology wise, is a little more relevant because you have that same on demand. I could just type the song into YouTube yep. and go listen to it, or I can go to iTunes and go get it immediately. I don't have to wait for the radio to play it, and I don't have to go to MTV and wait for that video to come up. Like I can, or I could go to Tower Records and buy the album. Those are my options, right? Yeah. There was a time when the only way to get all that stuff, it's not like I was sitting at a preview station at Tower Records going the next track, next track, next track right. for every album. Yeah, uh, and like that was. It's hard to remember, but that was a time when games was like GameSpot put up three one minute clips of a game and like E3 came along and that's where you got some footage of a game. And then you had to go read somebody's article and look at screenshots and be like, what is Jeff saying about this game? Right. What is this hands on fucking demo you played? And then I remember when I read uh, Greg's Ninja Gaiden review mm -hmm. and like it was like this game sounds fucking awesome. Like, I guess I'll go buy it. Yeah. Uh, and like kind of like sight unseen. Yeah. And I feel like that was a, just a different time. Now I can go watch a full playthrough of any game I want. 
now if, if a game is out someone is live streaming right. it right now <laughs> right now i mean if I'm being, people have been live streaming the full titanfall campaign the game's not out yet you somebody's know? probably live streaming this right now right oh shit <laughs> if, if i'm being completely honest the only reason i read game reviews at this point is because i'm one of those deranged sickos that actually enjoys reading criticism like that's no, yeah the i enjoy the form i enjoy yeah, the, uh, the uh, a, a good writer that can contextualize a game for me in a, in a way other than just the is 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 good bad yes no like that's a rarefied thing and when it's done well i'm glad to read it but there are not a lot of me out there and i anymore. think that the, those sorts of things are valuable in a different way the same yes. way movie criticism is you know the same way like film criticism has is, is you know it's not purchasing advice the same way it used to be no it's not thumbs up thumbs down on tv this is what's in the theaters this yeah, week exactly yeah. you know like, it's, like i mean you get some of that in like the you know new york cab sure. fucking film criticism right. type shit but but like, like I, you can't trust that shit. yeah <laughs> sandy Kenyon, baby up. oh yeah I, i'm much more uh like i will read a review or an op-ed criticism of a game right. non-scored non criticism of like i want to hear somebody's thoughts i want to hear somebody distill what this game is in their words and right? that and most of the best of that stuff will already come weeks or months after a game comes out because that's the stuff that comes after people have really picked it apart have digested it have really kind of like you know have gone gone to the fucking well with that thing and and just like you know really got gone into a deep dive with it whereas honestly most reviews that go up around launch are you know it, you don't have that same time to really wrestle with it it's what is my feeling right now? How did I feel about this experience? Yeah, and I think that that's, uh, that's an, another natural transition that we've been going through for a while. And moves like this from Bethesda, I think, maybe just accelerate that stuff. Probably. In terms of just like, I just don't think game reviews are valuable the same you, way they were. Do you think there'll be a time in the near future where early preview stuff like this will become suspect? Where when you start seeing this stuff go up anywhere, people will begin, like we'll move so close to day one content releases from major outlets that anything early will look like it was uh, payola or somebody was like people have been suspecting that for so long and i feel like at some point it will just turn into like well the, this early coverage seems so positive they must have just gotten a uh, quid pro quo for it i don't know I, I i don't really know where some of that stuff goes from here you know and, and i think that because you know I, talking to i i think pe a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about where we're at with this stuff and and because i think for different publishers different things are working for them mm -hmm. um because i you know i hear some publishers talking that like that maybe the youtube influencers and, and the paid campaigns that they're doing there actually aren't translating into sales mm. the way that they thought it would mm. and you know as they try to like ferret out what works for them they're starting to look at this stuff a little sideways and go like maybe this isn't the way to go but i think for other publishers it's probably working out great i think it probably depends on the game the community and who they pay and all this other you know and and who they can get the game to um so I think it's a really murky time and the stakes have never been higher. You know, we're seeing fewer huge budget games anymore, which then naturally backs into the concept of like, well, there's even more riding on this stuff. So then you back into why would you ever send out copies for review? Because you're a small publisher. And, or you're you're a, you're exactly. a group of four people, yes. and like you can't get your voice heard, and like totally. I feel like the cycle will it'll come back around. Absolutely, the wheel will turn again, and like there are people that would be banging down the door to have uh, somebody review a game, right? Yeah. To, to get to that cover coverage. it in any way, yeah, to Just cover to get it them, in any get, way. because they're trying to build awareness, right? You know, like like a game like Skyrim, maybe they need to build some awareness around the idea that they're putting it out again. Right. I don't know. Right, but they're they're and in Dishonored is, was big, but it's not like the one of the biggest franchises in the world. So there's probably some awareness building to do around that. But you build awareness with influencer campaigns and if, YouTube and getting share of voice and being a Nintendo Switch commercial. Sure, yeah. If your game is already featured in a, pre, a you know <laughs> debut of a new console, you're you're doing all right. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, there has never been. I will say this: there's never been a better time to be playing video games. This is it. Total uh, playing video games. Yeah. Absolutely, this man. It. It's just the, it's everything that goes with that when you are trying to do that in a somewhat professional manner. Uh, that, you know what? That is like there's probably been never been a better time to be independently doing video games coverage. Sure. Yeah. There might have been better times if you're looking to have a stable job uh, <laughs> reviewing or being an editor for a big video game company. Uh, I mean, ultimately, it's you know. It, it, like I said, we are 
pretty insulated from a lot of this stuff just by virtue of the way we do tend to cover games. Um, and also by being very subscription focused. Yep. You know, that continues to be our main driver of like revenue and stuff like that is, you know, like that sort of stuff. And, and podcast ads that are never about video games. And also I think, you know, by design, not being so slavish to the product, you know, and the release schedule, like, you know, like you said, like reviews go up, I think, you know, they try to be timely, but not to the point of a, a bad product. It's usually or, for us, uh, you people, know. I think, you know, people ask pretty frequently, like, well, how do we choose what we review? And usually it's like, well, I was going to play through this thing anyway. And because I want to know, and that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean it's it automatically a good game or not, because I had to know about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Had to. I found out. Yeah. The hard way. I had to know about Blackwater. <laughs> Some things you yeah. just have to know. Yeah. Real journalism. Let's move on to emails. Let's see what other people have to say. I want to, I have to know what they have to say. Uh, great. What do they have to say about Blackwater? Uh, this first email comes in to Alex. Alex, I love Blackwater and I was really disappointed with your feedback and thoughts on it. That's from Joe Blackwater uh, uh, in Blackwater. Junior. Sorry, Joe. Head of, head of Blackwater. <laughs> hey, Beast Cast. <laughs> Hey, 